Hey everyone, this is Gabriel with Inside Human Rights. I'm traveling right now, so you're getting a different background than usual, but that won't affect the core content of today's video. We've talked about how human rights imposes obligations on governments, but we haven't talked about the types of obligations. Well, the human rights community has divided those obligations into three types. Duties to respect, duties to protect, and duties to fulfill. The first one, duties to respect, go to uh, what would be known as like uh, classic uh, liberalism or libertarianism is a more modern term on the basic idea. It's that the government should not interfere with your exercising of your rights. A good example of a duty to respect is the freedom of expression being that the government shouldn't be stopping you from saying what you want to say. The basic philosophy that underlies this is that the best way to realize your rights is for the government to step out of the way. And while that's true for some parts of your human rights, it's not true for all of them. The next class of duties are duties to protect. That is where the government has an obligation to protect you from the harm caused by third parties. An example of this could be a factory that's polluting in your neighborhood. The government has an obligation to do something about that. Now, as we talked about in a previous episode, human rights doesn't say how the government has to solve the problem, just that it has to do something to resolve it because otherwise this pollution is harming your human rights. Another facet of the duty to protect is to stop problems before they start through regulation. Let me give an example. Not everyone can just call themselves a doctor. If you want to be a doctor, it's going to take years of studying and you have to pass difficult examinations. And that whole process is monitored by the government to make sure that the people that come out at the end, they know their stuff. And so to show that they know their stuff, they're given a license to demonstrate that they've proven themselves. The value of having that is that when you go, when you're sick and you go to the doctor, you can rely on the person being there to be able to help cure you and not make you worse, not harming you. That, and by doing that, the government is complying with its duty to protect. Final type of obligations are duties to fulfill. Now, these are often viewed as more controversial. The word entitlements is thrown around, but at its core, it's really not controversial. Maybe at the cutting edge, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Let me give you examples to help clarify it. So let's say the government wants to throw you in jail. For whatever reason, it maybe just doesn't like your face. Well, they can't do that, not just yet. Before they can throw you in jail, they need to give you a trial. That means that the government needs to train and hire judges, prosecutors, they need to give you a defense attorney, they need to build you know, courtrooms and, and bring in people to, have, to be the jury. All of this costs a lot of money, but the government has to fulfill these obligations as part of the right to a fair trial before it can put you in prison. Let's say that the government does do all that, you are put in prison, and let's say in prison you become sick. Can the government just be like, eh, He's a prisoner, we don't care about him, just walk away. No, likewise, the government has another duty to fulfill right here. And that is, it must provide you access to medical care. By placing you in an institution, you're no longer able to care for yourself. That means that it's on the government's obligation to provide those things for you that if you were in regular life, you would be able to do yourself. This is part of the right to health. Even in the United States, which is not a big fan of the right to health, there is a recognized constitutional right to provide this health care to prisoners. The part where this gets controversial is when you apply the duty to fulfill to all of society. Does the right to work mean that the government has to provide jobs for everyone? Does the right to health mean that the government has to provide health care to everyone? And while there are controversies in certain parts of the world, <coughs> United States, in other parts they've totally embraced these obligations. Uh, in much of the world there is universal health care that's viewed as part of the right to health. Let me just end with one last example, which is the right to education requires that everyone be given a basic education. Well, that's what we have. It's called school, and no one is against that. Maybe some school kids. But if we can have that, why can't we have the other ones? Pretty much every human right is complex and includes duties to respect, protect, and fulfill. So once you understand this three-part typography, you can start understanding the content of every single human right, which is what we're gonna to get to into future videos. That's it, I've hoped you liked this video. If so, please click subscribe for more videos from Insight Human Rights.